Building a list style view app like this is easier than ever before using Swift UI list. As you can see, it's very similar to UI table view, but with way less code. In this episode, you're going to learn how to create a list as well as how to build a custom layout row view. Then I'm going to show you how to add sections to the list to organize list items. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. The first step is to create a Swift UI project. So go ahead and create a new project in Xcode and make sure that the user interface is set to Swift UI. Once the project is created, the second step is to rename the root view. By default, Xcode creates and sets the content view.swift file as a root view inside the scene delegate.swift file. To make it more meaningful for what we are doing, rename the content view.swift file to landmark list.swift. Also, rename the structure name inside the file. Then, change the root view in the scene delegate.swift file as well. Let's update the initializer inside the preview provider, which will update the view instantly on the right as we write code on the left. I have prepared an assets folder that you can simply download from this article at softauthor.com. The link is in the description below. Once it's downloaded, unzip the folder, then drag and drop it to the assets.xcassets folder. The third step is to structure our data model for our app. For that, I'm going to create a plain Swift file called landmark.swift. It is going to have two parts in it, landmark structure and landmarks data. Let's create a landmark structure. First, import Swift UI at the top, then create a landmark struct. This is going to have five properties. Title will be the name of the landmark, country, the origin of the landmark, image name is a type of string that returns the title inside the closure. This way, I don't have to provide two pieces of data, one for title and one for image name, as they will share the same name. Thumbnail image, which returns title as well with the string thumbnail at the end to match the actual image name. Finally, the flag name, which will have the same value as the country property. And the second part of the landmark.swift file is the actual data to build this app. I'm going to call it landmarks data, which is an array of landmark objects. I have already prepared the data, so I'm going to simply paste it in here. As you can see, the image names in the assets folder are matching with the value of the title properties. You can see the same for thumbnail image and the country. Now we have data ready for our app. The fourth step is to create an actual Swift UI list. Switch back to the landmark list.swift file and Inside the landmark list struct, declare a property called landmarks, which is an array of landmark objects. I'm going to set its initial value to an empty array for now. Let's pass the landmarks data to the landmarks initializer in the preview provider so that we can see the update. Passing data in here will only update on the preview provider. If you want to see the actual view on the simulator, you will need to assign landmarks data to the landmarks property inside the landmark list struct like this. 
Inside the body property, define a list view using list initializer and pass landmarks to it as a parameter. Then create a closure with a parameter called landmark, which will have a landmark object on each iteration. Then show the title by initializing the text structure, passing the value of landmark.title to it, which will be added to the row view of the list. Let's preview it and we got an error. The error says initializer init requires the landmark conform to identifiable. So what this means is when using a structure inside a list, it must conform to identifiable protocol and the ID property must be added to it. The identifiable protocol is telling the list to identify each row uniquely using the ID property. So add identifiable text to the landmark structure type conforming to the identifiable protocol and define a property called ID with the value of UUID like so. The UUID is a universally unique value that can be used to identify types, interfaces, and any other items. Let's see the result on the preview provider. Nice. Thanks to Swift UI, I don't have to deal with data source or delegate method anymore. The fifth step is my favorite, which is building a custom row view similar to this design. It has the thumbnail image on the left, then the title and subtitle, one below the other, then the country icon image on the right. Let's take a look at the skeleton to see how we will build this layout. As you can see, there are two type of Swift UI structures that we can use to build this design. The first type, generic structures, which are the invisible containers such as H stack, B stack, spacer, group, and so on. And they are used for arranging view structures, which are the ones that are visible on the screen such as text, image, and so on. As you can see, H tag will be a wrapper container for a row view. Basically, it will arrange its children in a horizontal line. So let's create an H tag structure and put the thumbnail image inside. Add an image initializer, passing the value to it called landmark.thumbnail. And you can see the thumbnail images appear in the list. Nice. Next, let's add the title and subtitle, one below the other. To do that, I will need to wrap two text views inside VStack, which will arrange its children vertically. So after the image, define VStack, which is very similar to HStack. Inside it, define two text views for title and subtitle, passing landmark.title and landmark.country as parameters. Then define another image for country outside of the VStack, passing landmark.country as a parameter. To move the country icon to the right, I'm going to use something called spacer, which is an invisible container that will push any view declared after it to the right if it's in the horizontal stack or to the bottom if it's in the vertical stack. I want to push the country image icon to the right, so I'm going to add the spacer structure above the country image. As you can see, the layout on the preview provider works magically at this point. This is so cool that I don't have to deal with auto layout anymore. The sixth step is to style the row view items using modifiers. One or more modifiers can be chained to any view structure to get a different version of the original value. As you can see, the title and subtitle are not aligned to the left. To do that, 
pass an alignment parameter to the VStack initializer with a value of dot leading, which will make all its children move to the left edge. Then I'm going to make the title bold by adding bold modifier at the end. Similarly, let's change the text color of the country to gray. So dot foreground color, opening closing parenthesis and pass dot gray like so. Also add rounded corners to the thumbnail image using the corner radius modifier with a value of eight like this. And it's looking great. The next step is to add section heads to the list. As you can see, the landmark items in the list are in the combination of hills and castles. Let's organize them by their categories, which will be the section heads. So changing the data structure will be the first step to accommodate adding a section header to the list. In the landmark docs.swift file, define another structure called category, which conforms identifiable protocol and that has three properties. Then replace the existing data with the new. So declare a variable called categories data, which will have an array of category object. I have already prepared that data set as well. So I'm going to paste it in here. As you can see, each category has a title, which will be our section head. Using the combination of nested for each with section structure, we can create a list view with section heads very quickly. Switch back to the landmark list.swift file, then replace to categories data in the preview provider and change the landmarks property to categories and change the type to category as well. Comment the existing code inside the body property. Then create a list like so. This time I'm going to use for each structure to iterate over the categories data. Then define the section initializer with the header parameter with the value of category dot title. Inside the closure, let's create another for each loop by passing category.landmarks as a parameter. Now we have a landmark object. So I'm going to copy the existing code from starting each tag to ending and paste it in here. Now we have the list items organized by section heads. Nice. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.